And we have Monica Malaquin to help us walk this journey and probably bring out uh, the interior designers in all of us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Are you okay? You're looking great. Thank you so much. Kindly, I am fine. No problem. Karibu sana. Kindly introduce yourself uh, so that we understand where you're coming from with this conversation. Ah, okay. Yes. My name is Monica Malakwen. Mm -hmm. I'm an interior design expert. Mm -hmm. I help convert interiors into beautiful places mm -hmm. to work and live in. Mm -hmm. I am a director at Indulgence Designs, an interior design firm that majors in corporate interiors. I'm also a trainer at Indulgence Blueprint. Mm -hmm. I teach simple interior design lessons to help one become their own interior designer. Yes. And that is why you're here today. Because we have massacred our spaces trying to say we are interior. <laughs> Forgetting that their space is different from ours. Mm -hmm. Probably theirs is bigger or smaller and that's why they've done whatever it is that they've done. So at what point do we begin? What is the first basic thing that you will teach me to get to class? <laughs> okay. The first thing I want to say is yes. everyone has a personal test. Just true. like uh, our individual styles, just like our personalities, we all have different interior design styles. Mm -hmm. We made in about seven, there are very many, but you can go specifically into your, once you know your interior design style, it becomes very, very simple for you. Okay. Yes, for some people, they, they are simplistic and you'll find them working with whites and blacks and they are fine. Mm -hmm. For some people, that is just too simple. Mm -hmm. They would prefer to have color like we have in the yes. studio. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the first thing to do is to know, your in, to know your personal style and to know your interior design style. That way, when you even go shopping for interior design stuff, you're able to pick items that will actually work in your space. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that way you avoid picking something, bringing it home and it becomes out of place. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have that problem. <laughs> I think I need to declutter. <laughs> so yeah. how do you know what style is yours? So say, for example, um, I might be very loud, but then I'm attracted, loud in terms of colors, mm -hmm. but then I'm also attracted to a simple, um, well put together, minimalist kind of space. Mm -hmm. But how do you know that this will work for me and my different personalities? Uh, the first place to begin is uh, what inspires you? Ah, okay. What kind of interiors resonates with you? Mm. I am sure when you look at some spaces, you will feel like, wow, this looks good. Yes. And other spaces, you are like, ah, Hi. that is a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was something going on the other day, and it was about an interior space. And mm -hmm. people are thinking, this is too much. It's expensive, but mm -hmm. ah, why did he choose that and that? Yeah. So depending on what you get attracted to, mm -hmm. you can begin from there. Mm. Yes. You, you mentioned something about the seven different styles. Yes. that you majorly own. Maybe you can take us through that pretty fast so that we understand which styles these <laughs> are. Wow, oh, okay. Mm. The first one is the modern, the modern style. Okay. Basically, this is a style that keeps evolving. You know, mm. what is modern now wasn't modern. A True. Few, Do you remember the cabinets? The TV, <laughs> yes. The wall units. The wall units. That, yes. that was the name. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. From where I come from, that was a basic gift every time you are having a wedding. Yeah, basically, if you didn't have a wall unit, then <laughs> yes, uh, there is a contemporary interior design style. There is the mid century modern. Mid, -se mid century modern uses a lot of color, just like we have around here. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, it's uh, shapes, circles, you know, regular shapes. Okay. Yeah, that is very common with the mid, mid century modern. Okay. The, we have the minimalist, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which was white, basically white and blacks, mm -hmm. mostly white and accentuated with the blacks. Mm -hmm. We have... <laughs> Is, did you mention about the, the industrial? There's the ones that Ziko, uh, the but they have the rough, the rough edges, not very... Yes, the industrial style came from a revolution where initially we used to, the factories were being converted into offices and even homes. And you know, they were 
massive spaces like the godowns we have right now yes. open brick mm -hmm. yeah and uh, that style evolved from that where you now have hanging uh, hanging bare lights on yeah. bare walls and, and we've it's embraced a, it it looks really nice it look, yeah it, it looks, looks actually really, really nice. nice it's a style that has been accepted and it's working for uh, some people yes yes i mentioned decluttering earlier and i think it's one of the things that we need to do we hold a lot in our spaces <laughs> is it something that you would advise uh, someone when they come into your class to just learn about being an interior designer yes what happens an interior uh, when you disclutter when you have an empty space to begin with it's an empty canvas where you can bring in things that work actually for that space but mm -hmm. what happens and especially in our cultures we hold quite a bit a lot when a table is broken down you push it to the side you buy a new table and then you keep it there and you know, no empty space remains empty yes. for long. Soon you will be putting a old TV on it. So you have a, t a table and a TV over there. You have another one here. And a lot of things keep holding in that space. I advise people to declutter. I did a series on decluttering. And uh, there is a system where we followed. It's inspired by the Jap Japanese system. Okay. Where you declutter per category. You start doing your clothing category we know what happens with clothes <laughs> the number of times we buy clothes that we never use some some we never use some we've outgrown and mm. hopefully one day we are going to fit into them so it's a system where you go through each category starting with the clothing category you let go of everything that you do not use mm -hmm. i like to say six months a lot of people feel like probably six months is too it's short, too short. <laughs> but it, it makes sense if i've not touched that outfit in six months i've not thought about it it just makes sense to give it away. I probably, probably won't think about mm. it for the next six months. Yes. So you start per room as you go decluttering. Not per room, oh. per category. Per so category? You, yes. Okay. So you start with clothing. In the, you do clothing that includes shoes and bags and such kind of things. You then go to books and paper. We have a lot of books we do not use. You go to, um, I call it the miscellaneous, mm -hmm. but it basically covers our kitchens. Yes. And we know what happens in those kitchens. <sighs> the blue band container. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we keep them. <laughs> I don't know why we keep them. And, and paper bags. Yes, we the carrier bags now. Carry, yes, we just have a lot of them. Yes. Hopefully you will use them and then you don't. And then and cartons. Yes. I did that live on my own kitchen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> how did that go? Did you have a lot? I was amazed by the, thing, the things that I have kept in there. Yeah. yeah. I still, I, I'll, I'll actually begin to mention that it's a continuous process. Okay. Because I did, that was about maybe around four, five months ago. Uh -huh. But still, I still find some of them in there. And I, I strive to make it a continuous process. Okay. And that is what I'll encourage everyone to do. Great. Yeah. So... Good morning, Mikali. We have uh, feedback for you. This morning, I'm enjoying the show from Embo. I'm a student studying fashion design and clothing technology. Ah. And my dream is to become a lecturer, but still, I'm so passionate to be an interior designer. Ah, awesome. So I'm so happy for this conversation. This is Naomi from Embo. Ah, nice, so Naomi. I think th th it's also related with what they're doing, right? Yes. Fashion design and clothing technology. They, you could easily just, you know. Uh, what, what I can say, it cuts across design because design is basically based on principles, mm -hmm. elements and principles, and mm -hmm. this cut across the board where it comes to design. Okay. I'm also, I also did quite a bit of fashion design. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not that I studied it, but it's something that I developed an interest in. Mm -hmm. I can mention that my hobby is actually sewing, and I do that quite a bit. Monica. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, yes, we're talking about decluttering, but are there some things that you can find a way to reuse or p use them in a different way or put them together to just recreate something beautiful for the home instead of just throwing everything away? Yes. Uh, I, I mentioned that you sometimes have items that may, some of us struggle to determine whether they are trash or maybe they are tre a treasure. Yes. Yes. Uh, so how to determine basically is what most of the things that we declutter are actually stuff that are in, in storage mode in our in our spaces. There are reasons why they are in that storage mode. Okay. You would find that some of them is because we've not used them in a while. Maybe we were gifted and they we didn't find them useful. Mm -hmm. Some of them we even bought with a lot of money mm. and they are kept somewhere because of a reason. But what 
mostly is in our storage spaces is what has broken down or maybe it has a fault somewhere and you may find that the the fault is something really tiny that if we fixed if we fixed it yes we would still be able to use it i mentioned a shirt for example mm -hmm. that you don't wear because it doesn't have a button mm -hmm. You yeah. can do something about that. Actually, when you look at the inner seams of a shirt, there is always a label with a, a spare button. Yes. If you pick that button and replace it, yeah, it's back to use. And it happens with even items in our interiors. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you have a broken table. It just needs to be screwed and it will be back in use. Okay. But then it ends up in the storage mode. Yeah. So I call those treasures that we are keeping away. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really expensive. But if in any case you cannot use it anymore, I advise you to just let it go. Yep. It will bless someone else. And even sometimes it will put back money on your pocket. That is true. Yeah. That is so true. When we come to painting the walls or, you know, making sure that uh, it's as lively as possible, is there a rule to how we should do it? Especially if you're not the black and white kind of person who knows exactly this is what I want. If you <laughs> want to play around with... Look at the way you're looking at my set. No, I'm looking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for uh, something to use on that day. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Yes. So is there is there a basic way to know or guide while you're doing that? Yes. I can say yes and no, depending on the style. There are okay. styles that you can bring in all the colors and you'll still be fine. Okay. But uh, as a simple guide and a simple way that I use myself, mm -hmm. for example, you are in love with a certain pattern in a fabric. Okay. Like for example, maybe you can this yeah, one. use this cushion for example. Mm -hmm. Let's assume it has more than one color. Mm -hmm. So you can pick a color from that cushion and use it as your base color. Okay. Yeah, so if you have more than two colors, maybe if you have a green and maybe, let's say, they are whites and greens and something like that, mm -hmm. you can pick the neutral colors, use it in the general areas, areas like the walls. Mm -hmm. I love to do neutral furniture mm -hmm. because that way you are able to switch your deco as much as you can. Neutral but then furniture, ni, like what color? Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll talk about the browns. Ah, okay. We'll okay. talk about the greys. Uh -huh. Yeah. That way, even the throw pillows can be whatever color the curtains are able to blend in. Yes. You can play around with things around. Yes, I neutral. personally have grey chairs, and in season we just keep changing throw cushions and curtains, and you have a completely new space. Oh wow! Yeah. Some of us are just stuck with the one. <laughs> Even when <laughs> <laughs> you can keep switching up your deco using uh, the soft, we call them the soft furnishings, okay. which are cushions, curtains. Mm -hmm. Just leave out the expensive things like the furniture and the cap, maybe the carpet. Mm -hmm. You can still do that, but personally, I prefer to do neutral, neutral furniture, neutral carpet, and then you're able to switch up your curtains and cushions, and in, in an instance, you it's transform your space. It's a different, yeah. different space. What is the most common mistakes we make when we decide to walk this journey of becoming our own interior designers that you have experienced or seen in the spaces that we are in? The first one I will say is skill. Mm -hmm. We are obsessed with buying a certain kind of furniture. Probably maybe you've always dreamt of having a recliner. Okay. And now you're able to have a recliner. Yes. But you are taking a seven-seater recliner and your space is small. Mm. Okay, I yeah. see. Yeah. Once you put the space in the f uh, the furniture in the space, the space look completely crammed up and you do not have breathing space. You need to have a balance. We call it the positive and the negative spaces. Okay. The positive spaces are the parts that are occupied. Maybe you have put a chair and the rest of the space you need to have walking spaces and those are the negative spaces. So just positive is where it's occupied and negative is the bare spaces. The same with your walls. Okay. I go into people's homes and we clutter our walls. At least we stopped the calendars. Did we stop the calendars? Oh yeah. We did. At least we stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but then the family photos from A to Z. Yes. And they are not even arranged. They are, you know, everywhere. It was the line. You remember back in the day, like what to line maybe. When we used to put a, a it's called a, the kafrem, the 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 kambao that goes around yes. the house and you put all your photos <laughs> in <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 yes. And yeah. the sizes, maybe one is big, one, one is, is big. small. So there's no particular you know, format of doing it. So yes. th there needs to be a format to it. Yes, how we handle that is 
we, it's okay to have all your photos in a wall, but in that case, we do a photo gallery. Uh -huh. There are different ways of making the arrangement. They can be in different sizes, but we try as much as possible to have them in the same, at least if it's a frame, you can have a similar frame, mm -hmm. but then you can make an arrangement, you, uh, an arrangement of all the photos you have, at least in one wall. Oh, not and in then every other wall. So it yes. becomes like your wall of fame or yes, something. So yes. everything... Or if family tree, yeah. family something, yes. just on one And then wall. of great importance is to have a feature wall. Choose what you want us to focus on. Okay. Yes. We, uh, you know, when you're looking at a space and everything is, every wall is talking, maybe you have wall texture. There is a, mm. there is a generation that is doing wall texture yes. in all the four walls in a room. And you'll find it's, it's different wall textures. Yes. And this would actually be my advice to landlords mm -hmm. or those who are aspiring to be landlords yes you would rather have your walls in a neutral color in white bare just bare mm. because i have dealt with clients who had houses painted many different colors and pink and green in one sitting room yes and we've had to come and paint them down and i'm thinking what a waste of paint yeah. you should have just painted a neutral color mm. from the beginning mm. and most of people will actually find a way of They'll be comfortable with it. You won't even notice it, mm -hmm. and that will be great. Okay. Yeah. So skills, Jemeni, our spaces. We should be very keen on what our spaces and even the wall, the wall colors, uh, will be determinant with the space as well. Yeah, I think. So if it's a small space, we paint whites. Yes. To make sure that it gives us an illusion of more space or more room. Yes, there's a psychology to color. Yes. Yes, and. Uh, they are warm colors and then they are cool colors. Mm -hmm. The warm colors are the reds, the oranges, and the yellows. Mm -hmm. They are welcoming, they are very inviting, and they are best, best used in uh, common areas. Invi like, like your sitting room is a place where you always invite people, and it's welcoming, you know? Yes. It strikes appetite for your dining mm. room, yes. And then there are the cool colors, which are usually the greens, the blues, and the purples. Mm -hmm. They are cool, they are calming, best used in bedrooms and places where you want to relax. But uh, I'll mention that there is a whole pastel of those colors. There is a very light, almost white of it, and then there is the deep use. Yeah. So depending on what you're using for, like this blue is really deep, I wouldn't mm -hmm. advise you to paint. It's a blue, but you cannot paint it in your bedroom. Yeah. It will, ac it will again be depressing. So mm -hmm. if you're using color, the deeper you use, use them in smaller, smaller areas like accessories, like now in a cushion. But then the lighter versions is when you can now use to paint. That's, that goes to say that if you love a color, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you cannot use it in a space because it is, it is a, it's, it's maybe a red and you cannot paint red. Yeah. There, there's, there's a whole range in terms of use where you can actually be able to use the red. Yeah, yeah and still. I, I think I saw it. something when you say that, it, it makes sense. There's a house that I saw, it was all white, um, and then they had like a strip on one side where probably the bookshelf was that was just red, you know. <laughs> and you still have your beautiful red color right there. It doesn't mean that you have to paint the whole house now red. Yes. Or everything in the house has to be red because you love red. So you can just find beautiful places for your reds to come in. Yes. How much do we pay for this class? Because you've taught us a lot, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> How can people get in touch with you for these lessons, to join your classes, or to even inquire more about interior design? Okay, um, I came to realize that, in as, okay, I understand the value of interior design. Yes. And I realized that a lot of people may not be able to actually do it, probably because they do not know the right way and all that. Yeah. So, interestingly, I do not charge for these classes. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That is so nice. <laughs> yes. You do not charge. Yes. At the <gasps> moment, <laughs> this is my way of just helping as many people as possible make their interior the interior spaces better. Monica, that is so beautiful. <laughs> so, to yeah. give up a class, Wapi, where, yes. how, do we get, uh, how do we get you? On Facebook, yes. there's a group. It's called Indulgence Blueprint. Be your own interior designer. If you just search Indulgence Blueprint, be your own interior designer. Yes. You will be in. Just ask to join and you will be let in. I am joining <laughs> immediately. 
at 10. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Monica. You that is on social media. We'll find you there on Instagram. Monica Malakwen. Monica Malakwen. On YouTube. Okay. Yes. Hi. Asante sana. Thank you. We're going to take a very short commercial break. We will be right back. But I feel like I can just recreate my beautiful spaces. We'll be right back. Don't go too far. <laughs>